high tensile wire is a high carbon steel wire that is higher in carbon than standard type wire. This high carbon content significantly increases the wire strength and reduces elongation. Step 1. Run a string line around the perimeter of the field you are fencing. Notice the string here in the video? You will use this as a guide to place your posts. Step 2. Mark on the ground the location of the posts. The maximum distance between the posts for high tensile wire is in the neighborhood of 25 feet. Here the posts are being kept about 2 inches away from the string. Don't allow the post to touch the string. You want your post in the straightest path possible. Many types of posts can be used for high tensile wire fences. Wood posts are the strongest and are usually used at corners, for H braces, gate posts, and other areas where great strength is needed. Four to five inch treated wood posts are being used for this fence. A post pounder is setting them into the ground. The eight foot posts are being pounded four feet deep. Posts can also be set by hand digging and camping. This method being used here is the strongest. The small ends of the posts are being set into the ground to keep the ground disturbance to the minimum. The spotter here is using a level to make sure the posts are plumb. The operator of the skid steer here has never used a post pounder before. After about four posts, he was getting the hang of it pretty good. As a matter of fact, none of the three people that you see here building this fence today has ever built a high tensile wire fence before. The borrowed skid steer is heading back home. The farmer needs it to get his hay in. Here a pressure treated 2x4 is being ripped down into 2x2. Two two. These will be used for wire tensioners at the H braces. You will see them later. The skid steer has been returned and one of the three fence builders is scooting back home. She picked up crimpers while down at the farm also. Measuring for the H braces here. All corners and gate openings need extra strength to withstand the tension of the wires. Drilling a one quarter inch hole to accept the metal pin that is used to hold the H brace. one half inch of the pin will be exposed to support the tensioning wire.
nine inches. Why can you put hey, it's moving. No tensioning wire is needed here, so this pin is pounded flush. The long, dejected walk back to the tool wagon when something's been forgotten. One half of a pin can be used at the end of some of the ace races. That's good. Man, is she hammering like a girl. This post here wasn't quite pounded in the full four feet. This might come in quite handy later. Here we are cutting wire to use as tensioners at the H braces. Each H brace will get a double length of wire. Here we're measuring the lengths needed. The staple here will hold the tension wire in place. Two wraps of the tension wire were decided on for the extra strength. Here's a close-up of the high tensile wire joiner, or splicer, that is being used to close the loop. I'll leave the name of these splicers in the description. The wire is just pushed in equally from each end. No crimping required. Remember those 2 by 2s we cut earlier? Here they're being used to tension the wire. If you use this method, make darn sure the wood is very strong. Make sure there's no knots in it. You don't want this wood breaking apart as you're twisting. Make sure you're twisting in the correct direction so that when you're finished, the tensioner is actually being pushed against the H brace. You'll also want the wooden tensioner on the opposite side of your wire. This is called a spinning jenny. It holds your wire spool securely 
so the wire doesn't go all haywire on you when you cut the bands. Make sure you hold the wire so it doesn't go kaplooey. That cut end then gets fed through a hole in the spinning jenny to keep it from unwinding. These young guys and gals here were watching intently during the day. A full run of wire is being pulled out for the spinning jenny here. The bottom strand will be strung first. The wire is being run on the inside of the fence. You will then go on the outside of the fence to go around the corners. Deciding on a course of action here. Wonder why they decided to keep going. Wire is generally strung on the side that will receive the animal pressure. So here we're on the inside of the fence, but we're coming up to the corner here, and then we go to the outside around the corner. Then it'll loop back onto the inside as soon as you're past the H braces. Since this fence will be electrified, insulators will be needed any place the fence would hit the fence post. A long insulator that you see here is used at the beginning post. Six of the small post insulators were fed onto the wire here at this side of the run. The rest of them will be fed from the other end. The wire is fed through a small crimp. You can see it there. Here's an up close view of it. And then it'll be crimped onto the wires. Here you'll see them crimping both ends of the small crimp. Each post has been marked at the correct level for each wire strand. Here a staple is being used to secure this insulator against the post. Don't attach the insulator so tight that the wire can't slide back and forth.
Hickey, what can we call it? That should work. work. Actually, yeah, but if I tighten that thing on that, it'll be out of the way from that. Uh, Always make sure you don't have your wire touching any other wire to short it out. A line tightener here is being installed approximately halfway along the run. It was pretty much installed right where the hill crested and went down the other direction. Here we are back at the beginning of the run and the wire is being wrapped around the beginning post. Then after this we'll go back up to the line tensioner and tighten the wire. Just checking to see how tight the wire got. And it looks like you could use a couple more turns on the tensioner. The second strand is going up. It took about another hour to get the other four lines strung. The bottom two lines are electrified, the top two lines are electrified, and the middle line is not. The only difference, the middle line doesn't have the insulation around it. And the tighteners are put in about halfway in the run. This is why the bottom two strands are electrified. Baby lambs will be using this pasture. The old beat up spinning Jenny did its job.
Again, notice the wires on the inside of the post towards the animal pressure. As we approach the corner, the wires have been switched to the outside of the post. So you see the bottom two lines will be electrified, the middle one won't be, and the top two will be. Then you can see the wires been switched back to the inside again.